Hi, it's Mrs. Barker. Good to see you again. Now, I hear since we last met, you've been doing lots of work, including actually writing fractions as well, which is great news. In this lesson, we're going to be using a lot of the language you've been using before. So the words part and whole and equal, and of course, fraction, now that we're writing the fraction and, and the word division bar. I also hear from Miss Bunce that you've been using this stem sentence a lot to describe the fractions that you're writing. And I hope that you continue to use that in the practice activity that she set you. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. But we're also going to be using it a lot more in this lesson. Now, you'll also probably have noticed there's a couple of words down there you maybe haven't seen before. The words numerator and denominator. Now, don't worry if you haven't seen these words before or if you don't yet know what they mean, because we're going to be talking about that later in the lesson. So so we'll find out about that soon. Now, hopefully you've all got a pen and pencil or and a piece of paper um, so that you're ready to learn. If you haven't got those, just pause the video and go away and get them and then restart the video and we're all ready to learn. Right, so let's see how you got on with the practice activity that you did after the last lesson. If you've got a copy of what you did, you might even want to mark it as we go along to see how you got on. Now, this is the first shape that you were given, and we're going to be using this stem sentence each time to describe the fraction of the whole shape that has been shaded. Um, and again, if you've got your pen and pencil and paper handy, you might even want to try writing them again just to double check that you know how to do it. OK, so altogether, the whole has been divided. Oh, hang on a minute. What do we need to do when we say the whole has been divided? What's the first thing we need to draw? Yes, it's the division bar, isn't it? Because this is showing the relationship and it's a division relationship between the whole and the parts. OK, so let's do it again. The whole has been divided into three equal parts and one of the parts have been shaded. Fantastic. Is that what you wrote? Now, who can tell me what does the three in this fraction represent? Did I hear you saying that the three represents the number of equal parts that the whole has been divided into? Well, you're right. And of course, those three equal parts represent the whole. What about the one? What does that represent? Yes, you're right. It's the one part that's been shaded. It tells you the number of parts that have been shaded. Really well done. OK, let's have a look at the next one, shall we? Are you ready to write this one? OK, the whole has been divided. Oh, did you write your division bar? Well done. The whole has been divided into two equal parts and one of the parts has been shaded. Excellent. And remind me again, what does the two represent? The two is the number of equal parts that the whole has been divided into. You're right. And what about the one? What does that represent? The one is the number of equal parts that have been shaded. OK, let's do the next one. Now, don't forget to do that division bar as soon as you say that first bit, because remember, that represents the division relationship between the whole and the part. So let's do it all together. The whole has been divided into six equal parts and one of the parts has been shaded. Lovely. Now, for this final one, we're going to have to do a fair amount of counting. I'm sure you had to do that when you were doing your practice. So let's just give you time to count how many equal parts you've got. Are we ready? I'm ready to draw that division bar as well. Pens and pencils at the ready. OK, so the whole has been divided into 12 equal parts and one of the parts has been shaded. And remind me one more time, what does that 12 represent? That's right. It shows how many equal parts the whole has been divided into. So we've got 12 equal parts and those 12 equal parts would represent the whole. And then the one, what does that represent? 
You're right, it's the number of equal parts that have been shaded. Definitely ready to move on now. You guys are so good at this. Do you know what? I think you could even say it without having it written on the screen. What do you think? Shall I remove it? Let's see if we can do it. Here we go. OK, right. So the whole has been divided into three equal parts. One of the parts has been shaded. I knew you could do it. Well done. So each time we write a fraction, what is the first thing that we need to draw? That's right. It's the division bar because that shows us the division relationship between the whole and the parts. And then where are we going to look? Right, we're going to look at the whole and see how many equal parts it's been divided into. And we're going to write that at the bottom of our fraction. Now, remember I told you that you were going to learn some new language. Well, if you don't already know this, this part of the fraction has got a very special name. It's actually called the denominator. And denominator comes from the Latin word, which means to name. OK, so the final thing that we now need to look at with our fraction is we need to look at how many of those parts are shaded. So how many of the parts we're looking at? And we're going to write that one at the top of the fraction. And guess what? This has got a special name as well. It's called the numerator. And numerator is also a Latin word. And that actually means number. So should we practice that language together? So remind me, when we're first starting to write a fraction, what is the first thing we need to draw? Let's hear you say it. Yeah, it's the division bar, isn't it? So well done. And then who can remember the name of the next part that we write in a fraction? Can you remember that word? It's the denominator. Well done. Now look at this fraction and let's say it all together. The denominator is... Three. So that's the next thing we draw. And let's use this sentence to explain why we know that the denominator in this fraction is three. It's because the whole altogether is divided into three equal parts. Lovely. Now, what's the name for the final part of the fraction that we're going to write? Can we remember? Remember, it's a Latin for the, the word number. Yes, it's the numerator. So let's say it all together. Look at this fraction. And the numerator is one. And again, let's use this to explain why we know that the numerator in this fraction needs to be a one. It's because one part is shaded. Excellent. OK, so let's have a look at these shapes. And before we start writing the fraction that each one represents, um, I'd like you just to have a look at them all and think what's the same about these shapes, but what's different? So you might want to pause the video at the moment and go away and find someone in your family that's not too busy. Or you could always tell your teddy, tell them what you found that's the same about these shapes and what's different. And then once you've done that, you can come back and we'll share the ideas together. OK, are we ready? So who spotted that? All of the shapes are different. You're right there. That's quite an easy one to spot. But did anyone spot anything else that's different about each of these shapes? Yes, well spotted. Each of the shapes has been divided into a different number of equal parts. Did you spot that as well? OK, so now what's the same about all of them? Now, this could be a bit trickier. Ah, well done. It's the fact that each one of the shapes has only got one part that's shaded. So that's the same in each one of them. Well done. OK, so pens and papers, a paper at the ready now. And we're going to have a go at writing each of these fractions in turn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up this sentence that we can say together. That's going to help us remember what the denominator is and what it means and also what the numerator is and what it means. And it also gives us good practice at saying those words again. OK, so for the first one, what's the first thing that we're going to draw before we write anything else? You're right, it's the division bar. And then we're going to write the 
the denominator and let's let's say this together the denominator is five because the whole has been divided into five equal parts that's right and then finally what do we write the numerator and let's say this all together the numerator is one because one part is shaded okay let's have a look at the next one and again what's the first thing that we're going to draw all together it's the division bar and then we're going to draw the denominator and we're going to say this together the denominator is six because the whole has been divided into six equal parts and then finally what are we going to write all together the numerator and for this one the numerator is one because one part is shaded ready for the next one okay all together what are we doing first the division bar and then we're going to write the denominator and the denominator for this one is two because the whole has been divided into two equal parts and finally we're going to write the numerator and for this fraction the numerator is one because one part is shaded now do you want to have a go at the final one on your own i think you can do so all together what are we going to write first of all well done the division bar and then what are we going to write next would you like to describe what it's going to be let's use that sentence all together yes the denominator is four because the whole has been divided into four equal parts and let's all say this one really loud what we're going to do last of all the yes the numerator and let's read it all together no you can do it on your own go for it that's right the numerator is one because one part is shaded you are doing fantastically here guys Now, do you remember when we first looked at these shapes, I asked you to tell me what's the same and what's different about the shapes, and you did that really well. What I'd now like you to do is not look at the shapes, but look at the fractions that you've just written down. And can you tell me what's the same and what's different about each of the fractions you've written? Again, if you want to pause the video and go and let someone in your family know what you've spotted, or you could always let your teddy know. And then once you've done that, come back and start the video again and we'll see if we've spotted the same thing. Okay, so did everyone spot that the thing that's different about each one of the fractions you've written is that the denominator is a different number? And that's because each one of the shapes has been divided into a different number of equal parts, isn't it? What about the thing that was the same for each of the fractions you wrote, though? Yes, it was the numerator, wasn't it? Because for each one of those shapes, only one of the equal parts has been shaded. So the numerator is always one. Great work. So I'm afraid we've come to the end of our lesson again, but you've done really well. Well done. Um, I'd like to set you another practice activity, if you don't mind, before the next lesson. And what I'd like you to do is draw me some shapes. So I want you to draw me a shape that can be represented by a fraction with a denominator of two. And then draw me a shape that can be represented by a fraction with a denominator of three and then a denominator of four and a denominator of five and so on. You can go on for as long as you want. Um, and you need to think about what that means. What does the denominator tell us? Remember the denominator tells us how many equal parts the shape has been divided into. So I thought it might help you if I gave you some examples that I, I've drawn. So first of all, if I want a shape that can be represented by a fraction with a denominator of two, um, if I draw a circle, for example, 
how many equal parts does my circle need to be divided into? You're right, if the denominator is two, it needs to be divided into two equal parts. Okay, so that actually works. So now I'm gonna draw a different shape and I've got a rectangle and this time I need a fraction with a denominator of three. So how many equal parts would this shape need to be divided into? That's right, it needs to be divided into three equal parts. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what I'm looking for you to do. Um, of course, you might choose to use different shapes and you might choose to divide them up in different ways. So long as your parts are equal and the number of parts is the same as the denominator for your fraction, then you know that you're going to be getting it right. So have a go at that, see how you get on, and we'll have a look at that in our next, in our next lesson. Take care, bye.